Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today. We'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn, I'm hosting today and I'm hanging out with illustrator, developer, podcast host, Ben Eblen. Hey Ben, how you doing? Hey, hey, how we doing? Good to be back. Yes. Round two. Round two. All right. Yeah, we had a great time yesterday. If you missed it, you can catch the replay here on Behance or um, subscribe to YouTube because then you can catch all of the stuff we have done um, and everything that we did with Ben. We'll do a little bit of a quick kind of recap of what we did as well. Um, shout out to everybody in chat. I can see Alessandra in there. Hello. Yes, sad you missed yesterday's. No worries. You can always catch up. Um, and you've been working on characters as well. Well, this is perfect, uh, perfect stream awesome. for you. Um, we've been, yeah, we had a great chat, um, learn a lot and just had a fun time kind of hanging out, which was really cool. Um, so don't hesitate to throw questions in chat as we're going along. We are live. So any question is a good question. Don't hesitate. Um, we'll keep an eye on YouTube as well. Cause Ben has a bit of a following over there. So we will do our best to keep an eye there, but usually we're looking at the Behance chat. Enough about that, Ben. Should we jump over to your screen? Maybe just quickly show uh, some of the things that you work on for those that uh, missed the previous one, and then we'll kind of jump into Definitely. what we're up to today. Definitely. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for uh, popping in again, keeping us company. Um, so yeah, I like stylized character stuff. A lot, of, like a, a lot of the stuff I do, at least currently, is stylized uh, characters. Um, some of my own, some more. Uh, like getting the likeness of others, like some of this sort of stuff with the the Last of Us. That's crazy good <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, that was a good one. I took a that was a a process that one. They're all a, yeah. they're all a process. Yeah. Um. But today we're going to be sort of uh, playing around with doing more of this. We're not going to get it to this kind of finish because um, we've only got what fifty five minutes or an hour or something. So we we'll get as far as we can. But this more sort of like blocky coloring that I've been playing around with more recently that I've been really, really enjoying. Mm. Um, and it's going to be, we're going to be doing it on this guy. So uh, that sketch that we had, oops, oops, sorry, that's me noodling around on it before the before the stream. Um, so this is the, uh, the sketch that we did yesterday. And we're just going to sort of, jump straight into it give you sort of like a high level look of how i might approach one of the one of the many ways that i would approach uh sort of doing some color and throwing some light on this guy and light and color and playing around with that and the cool thing is all these different um techniques and things that i'm using they're all based around the fundamentals of light so even if you're doing oil painting if you're doing um gouache if you're doing pencil or whatever like all the all the the laws of light apply it's really just the tool that that I'm using in this sort of situation. And the tool that like, I, um, uh, I built a little uh, plugin here. Yeah. I'm gonna actually sort of got to get that over here. So it's called the Filthy uh, Auto Fill Plugin, which just speeds up my workflow as well. So I've got a bit of a background in software development, my, my, uh, myself and a good friend of mine and podcast host and, and business partner, Francis Lee, um, sort of developed this one. Cool. Where it just like auto fills these shapes and you can also do like hue shifts as well. So it does each color a little bit differently and you can do luminance locking and all that fun stuff. But we'll we'll just uh just use this to to get us started. Nice. How was that process yeah. like creating a plugin for, for Photoshop? Obviously you need software skills to, to to figure that out, but did that take a long time, a lot of iterations? Was it fairly straightforward? What's uh... not not particularly. The goal of this was I just wanted to get like a uh, like a first version up, get it working first. Yeah, and that that was fairly quick, just to get like the um, the auto fill working, which was pretty cool. It was like nice just to scratch that development coding itch mm. in in context of art as well which was cool. And I was like, all right, I've got this working. And then all the ideas just started flooding in. It's like, oh, it would be nice if it could do this. It could be nice if it could do that. And then I sort of got Francis on board because um, he's awesome. He's, uh, um, his background is in software as well. And he's an absolute legend when it comes to that sort of stuff. And we're just sort of, yeah, been tinkering around with it. And the goal was just to get it out fairly fast. So I think it was like a couple of weeks of development, but not, not full time, just tinkering around with it when we caught up. Mm. and yeah and then we'll just keep 
iterating on it as I find different uses for it, adding texture to these shapes as well, seeing how we can do that. Um, and yeah, just, just having fun with it. Just did another way to create, I guess, one of yep. the things that I really enjoy doing is just, yeah, coding and, and being able to mix the two worlds is, is really, really fun. That's really cool. It's like um, quite a unique set of skills as well. We're talking a little bit about kind of um, like learning lots of different things. And I think um, I think back in the day, I, I remember many, many many years ago, we're talking about like T-shaped people. So it was the idea you'd be really good at one thing and then kind of pretty good at everything across here. So it's like pretty good across the top of the T and then you have this one specialization. Um, yeah. which is an old idea, well, old now IDEO kind of methodology. So you might be a developer, but you can also design a bit. You understand product a bit, you know, you can yeah. good at speaking, interpersonal skills, whatever, like you have all this like top stuff. Um, whereas I feel like it's now it's just like a circle. So you kind of have to kind of have to learn a little bit of everything. Um, Definitely. Not yeah. that you can't specialize. It's totally fine, but it nice. seems too future proof or like to be able to adapt quickly. It's good to learn lots of different things yeah uh, that's my like i i'm more of the uh the mindset of yeah jack of all trades sort of thing I, I i just get a little bit too interested in things sometimes and i sort of dive a little bit deeper probably than i should do it could be like a sophisticated form of procrastination i just get like lost in a, a particular topic and i just like dive deep and uh, some may say waste a lot of time but i enjoy it it's uh it's good fun but you know do you know the actual like the real saying of that jack of all trade like you know jack of all trades master of none yeah do you know the real saying of that i like, i remember hearing that like it might have been one of those ones that we attribute incorrectly yeah no 100%. tell me yeah it's like yeah. The, the the last half of it was cut off the real thing is so i'm paraphrasing but it's like the jack of all trades is a master of one but oftentimes better no hold on no jack of all trades is a master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one Right. And we've just cut that end bit off <laughs> yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. I'm just like, that just changes it completely. Yeah. And nowadays with all the resources, all the education tools out there, YouTube, even like some of these live streams that you guys are doing as well. There's no reason you can't just like learn under like what they used to do back in the day. You had to be uh, like a, uh, be specific in one thing because you could only really work under one master at a time. Like you actually had to go and sit with them Right, like a thing. master apprentice situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you can just hop around in any like in any fifteen minute time period. Go from like the master of developer, work underneath them. Go to like a an art tutorial, work underneath them, and sort of like meld the world, the two worlds. It's yep. that's just fun to me personally. Like it's just hopping around. Yeah, having a having a good time with it. Love it. Keeps it interesting too, doesn't it? Oh, hundred percent. Um, we have a question here from Alessandra. Thanks for the question. And anyone watching, if you've got a question, don't hesitate to throw it in chat, just like Alessandra has. This is great. Um, when did you know you wanted to design characters? What's your favorite part of it? Um, I like the, the freedom part of just being able to just play. I like people, like drawing people and figuring out like different expressions and how to convey that with... Uh, sort of like really simple shapes as well. I really enjoy like caricature and like melding those worlds together at the same time is, is really fun. I haven't yet, like you, you probably heard something like called stylization, right? It's like, oh, this is like a stylized character. Yeah. I kind of have a problem with that word because I don't know what it means to be perfectly honest. Like what, it's kind of like a spectrum. You mm. can go like caricature, you can go realistic, you can go semi-realistic. You can go caricature, caricature with semi-realism. You can go the Pixar. It's just such a, it's not even a spectrum. It's just like a big mismatch, mis mix, mix match of all sorts of different things. So it's, right. um, yeah. So there was no one point in time really, or maybe probably about two years ago where I got fed up with uh, just doing like copying photos yeah. and getting like fairly proficient at just copying and i was like hey, this is fun but let's see how i could uh maybe yeah just push past this and it's it was tricky really really tricky to mm. kind of do i have heard that before with it with i'm sure that i've heard that a similar story from at least one other illustrator that came through that was yeah photorealism you know artistic trying to get it sort of sort of perfect and then when they branched out into um, you know, developing their own style, we'll say, 
um, yeah. or not trying to make it photorealistic, but you know, somewhere on this in this galaxy of styles, I would yeah. call it even more than yep. a spectrum. Um, yeah, they were just much happier. You know, just preferred their work, yeah. and their work got noticed a lot more. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Gosh, maybe Johanna can remember who that was. <laughs> maybe not. We do a lot of streams, but uh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that conversation, and they were talking about their like their Instagram feed, and it was like I'd spend days and days and days trying to get this sort of perfect you post on instagram and it just gets brushed past and once they started doing yeah putting it you know that style across then people started noticing their work and you know even just from yeah, a commercial sense i think yeah from a from a pure business standpoint and looking and, and just trying to think logically about that if you get too photorealistic people can just think that it's like a screen cap like right if you get good enough we traced it sort of thing yeah exactly like that whole thing and yeah. it's just like oh i spent like a month of Sundays doing working on this thing. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, cool, next. Yeah. It's just like, not like the numbers are everything, but it's just, it was something that I was thinking about as well. I was like, hmm, how can I make this more me, I mm. guess? Which in reality is just a combination of all the influences that I, I like. Yeah. Um, and all the artists that I like. So it's, and it's ever evolving as well, which is fun. Whereas if you're just copying a photo, it's just like, you kind of stuck yeah stuck in that way but there's nothing wrong with that as well as a practice and i mean you got artists that do that like blow them up on like massive canvases and, like yeah. paint them in oils like there's nothing wrong it was just more so my yeah just my way of thinking about it not right or wrong just sort of yeah but no really good question it is a good question we got a few more as well but i just want to kind of just touch back on what you're doing here um so yeah cutting back that eyelid like just added so much depth so can you just explain yeah. exactly what you did then like you didn't erase it or you, or you did i'm just not sure what you did. no so basically i'm i'm working in so I, I put a base down right so i've got this base color for the skin tone mm. and what i can do or what i did was so i'm just like on a time crunch so i forgot to talk about the actual thing that i'm working on yeah uh, I, i'm using <laughs> different color layer modes so this is like a faster way to work I use color layer modes kind of as a means to an end. They're not like the thing. I don't just slap a color layer mode and call it a day. I'll oftentimes uh, use these to like add color variation, like maybe a little bit of red in the cheeks or maybe a little bit more yellow in the forehead or something like that as like the under sort of the base, I guess you could say, that I can work on top of. And then I can color pick those layers later on when I'm painting. But when it came to like cutting out this shape, I came on top with a multiply layer mode, which mm. is basically something that I use for shadows or darkening things down. So all I did there, so we take that away, everything's seeming kind of flat, mm. but I'm thinking about the light source. So I'm wanting like a top down sort of light source. You notice I'm not looking at the reference here. I'm not kind of trying to emulate this, this light source. I want it maybe like a more studio kind of lighting, yeah. softer light sort of coming down. And with that, I'm trying to think logically with, okay, if the light's coming down, there's going to be shadow here. There's going to be shadows on this part here. There's going to be shadows on the lip. And there's sort of layer modes allow me just to knock in those shadow shapes quite fast. Yeah. And then I can come through and, and finesse them a little bit later. And these, these take quite a long time if you want to get them to like a really rendered kind of finish as well. So... That's that's something to take into account uh, when doing this. It's not going to come together. There is definitely an ugly stage right. that I encounter often, like really often. And I didn't realize that in the beginning and it was frustrating me. And I'd oftentimes quit mm. before I got past that stage. But I think that a lot of my learnings came from taking the time to go go through that stage, go through the frustration and I'd much prefer to grab those learnings yeah. and sort of slug through it and be frustrated uh, and learn rather than just like, oh, I'll just start again. Because yeah. then you're kind of just starting scratch and it was from scratch and then you, the potential to make the same mistakes again is just greater, mm -hmm. I found. So it's just like, yeah, go through that ugly, that ugly stage. It's, uh, it's beneficial. It sucks. It really, really sucks. But definitely it's it's like the fast track it's like training with a weight vest on like going for a hike yeah. you can go for a nice leisurely hike if you want but if you want to like really push yourself push through that ugly stage that's something mm. i tell my my younger self yeah my younger self being like 
last year. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Moving quick, yeah. Yeah, even, even an hour ago as your younger self. There um, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a Mitch Hedberg joke where it's like, here's a photo of you. Here's a photo of me when I was younger. And he's like, every photo is a photo of you when you were younger. Um, Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that joke. Uh, <laughs> so there's an, uh, let's get to some of these questions as we're rolling along. Um, yeah, definitely. Johanna has asked, um, speaking of recent change in the way you color your work, what inspired that? Was it time for change or did you come across some work that really stuck with you? Uh, it felt like time for change, I think. Um, I, I've started to get into a little bit more of a traditional workflow. Like I've, I've uh, started to play around with gouache a little bit. And this is kind of one of the ways that I've seen people use gouache. It's very um, blocky. It's very like you put the, put the shapes down and that's that. There's not too much blending going on. I'll do some blending when I want to. Like I'll erase this back to get a little bit more of a transition going like if i want i know this side of the head is going to be in shadow right but it's not going to be in that much shadow so i can come back and and blend that out if i want to sort of make it a bit bit more of a realistic or realistic as as it, it's a cartoon character right but um but yeah it felt like more of a change and it's it's good to just to change it up i also got some inspiration from a lot of um environment artists as well I've seen a lot. Artists. Yeah, so you've got uh, what's a good one? Ango the Mango, Angela Sung, I think her name is. You see a lot of her work in gouache, and it's very blocky. It's very and the illusion that you can get just with these blocky shapes is like awesome. And it's there's been no blending here, and it's starting to show some volume and form, and just with these geometric shapes, and it's kind of cool. Even going right. back to what I was talking about yesterday with JC Leindecker. He has a lot of this kind of thing going on. He's working in like oils and that kind of stuff. So yeah, just trying to manipulate the digital tools to uh, cool. have some fun, yeah, play around it's with it. Almost a little bit Monet kind of in the yeah. blocking. Yep. Interesting. I love that. And we were talking a bit about that the other day as well, like taking inspiration from sort of the old masters as well as, you know, the, the hot, you know, people on Instagram and, you know, Nike and stuff. Yep. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Um, that's great. Uh, yeah, Johanna shared that um, Angela's uh, Instagram in there. It's very interesting. Um, uh, do you have any tips? Here's another question. Do you have any tips for drawing skin tones and character builds that are outside of your comfort zone slash personal frame of reference? Yeah. Use reference. Right. Um, so that's one way to do it. Try and look past the lighting as well. So for example, I'm seeing in this, I'm seeing a lot of like yellows, some some purples, even some warmer tones here as well. So once you start to observe some of these colors, you can start to really push them and bring them into your own work as well. Like regardless of the skin tone, there's gonna to be variation, or else they're gonna look like a, uh, like a statue, like a statue is one material, and that's just gonna be like a flat, kind of uh kind of color I'd, I'd try and yeah look look past the lighting in a lot of these um reference images and see if you can find some of those color shifts even in your own face you're you're your best reference sometimes take some photos and like in like neutral lighting or just not even neutral lighting just take some photos in general and and see if you can see okay my nose is a little bit more on the warmer side how can I incorporate some of that into, into my work? And in what scenario, why is it like that? And sometimes it's in like my skin tone, like Caucasian skin tone, like my ears are oftentimes more red. I don't know if you can see this on stream, but like ears are a little bit redder. My nose oftentimes um, is a little bit more red because of the blood vessels uh, are closer to the skin and that kind of thing. You can get like scientific with it if you want. Mm. I, I like to go a little bit more into the scientific like why why are things doing certain things why is the light interacting with the skin in certain ways but yeah just experiment don't be afraid to like throw different colors in there because a lot of it comes down to so if i just flip this to black and white a lot of the reason why this is starting to come together and look 3d is because of the values the lights and the darks the color i can play with right so for example if i'm using this thing called luminance lock in the in the filthy 
uh, plugin, and I try and match, like if I can get this down a little bit and match somewhat similar to this sort of value here, maybe a little bit lighter, just on the cheek here. If I do these hue shifts, right, and I just put random shapes here, right, they kind of blend in to this sort of section of the cheek. They, they don't look too different, particularly if I kind of match the values. But if I go back to color, look how like mm. crazy those colors are. And they don't, they kind of look out of place here. But if we use some of that, if we just get a brush and if we turn off luminance lock, and that's what luminance lock is, it basically holds the value or the perceived value. It's not the light or the brightness here. That's, it's like we had to, Francis had to play around with some maths to, uh, like a lot of maths to get that to work because it's like the perceived lightness and darkness of a thing. Hmm. Don't need to get into the weeds of that, but basically it's all to do with the the values. Because if yeah, I it might even... be a whole stream on that, because I yeah, it's definitely deeper than it's probably a bit about how Photoshop interprets that. As yeah, well, there's different right? color spaces. Yeah, like you got the the lab color space, um, which I like using uh, recently as well. But if I do some of this, I can start like his cheek is blue, but it doesn't look too off, right? You can do that. And if we have that in different areas here as well, put some of the blue here, even some of the more blues in the shadows, we can start to play with these colors and it doesn't have to be so literal with uh, with this stuff as well. So we can just, yeah, play and we can even use the blue to have a bit of like facial hair if we want because it's working within that value structure it's why it sort of looks correct I'd, I'd highly recommend looking at some of the old masters drawings or paintings or whatever and if they're super colorful and you're like how do they do that turn it to black and white and you'll see that it holds together in mm. the black and white phase just as much and, that, and that's the reason why why it works mm. and why it still looks like a thing rather than like a big uh mash of colors yeah, but yeah, values are values are massive. Um, I'd almost focus on values. Sometimes I work that way as well. I'll start off with black and white, and then I'll use color modes to go over the top of the black and white. That's another look uh, that it will give you as well. Awesome. That's great. It's like a um, lesson in color. I'm loving it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's super cool. It's amazing how like in depth you can get, right? Like it's, oh. um, we were talking yeah. before about like going deep into something and obviously mm -hmm. you've spent quite a lot of time going deep into color, like color theory, like and how, how it works and a perception of, of color and the technical side of, of color and how the, yeah. pres presumably how the audience interprets color and, and changes and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating. If there's one tip as well that's like was like a real aha moment for me, mm. you'll notice that his skin is looking kind of matte at the moment. There's not too much shine or anything going on. I like to think of that first. So there's two things, without getting too technical, just like a quick note. There's two things that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about something called the diffuse lighting or what they call like Lambertian reflection if you want to get scientific with it, which is basically making something look like matte. Right, the lighting scenario is just going to put a a more uniform look to him. But as soon as I do something like this, let's take the eye for example. If I just clean up this eye here, because I've got that matte lighting sort of relationship working at the moment, there's like a slight gradation here because this is the eye is a the eye is a sphere. You've got a little bit of this. Um, shadow going on as soon as I throw a highlight in here right then it looks like it, it fits there's a reason why that looks correct because it's the reflection of the light source that I've set up right. beforehand I right. this needs a lot more explanation but I thought I'd just mention that look up specular highlights versus um, uh, sort of diffuse lighting because mm. without this diffuse lighting and having this nice gradation and understanding the more matte finish, those highlights won't make any sense. Right. So if you just so did that, way. yeah. If you if you kind of coloured it in, in a flat sense or something like that, or yeah, it could be a stylistic way. choice though. Yeah, that's the thing. Right. If if you're wanting it to look more three D, then definitely do you do you do whatever you want. <clears throat> but if you wanted it to look more three dimensional, that's something that's really helped me 
is thinking about those two lighting scenarios separately. Interesting. Um, even like here with the eyelid, if I make sure that I get this gradation feeling correct, so it looks like a matte material, then I can come on top here and then add in more of like a shine to the eyelid. <coughs> Excuse me. And then sort of diffuse that out a little bit and that can look more natural and like it's an actual shine on the eyelid and keeping that sort of consistent mm. with the light source and this might even have a bit of a shine up here as well right but so yeah, it's, it's not just of, like random squiggles for no reason mm. like there's a reason for this yeah. subtle kind of there's like a, a line that's going down because of the curvature and the Exactly, and how shiny the object is as well. This is super shiny, so this highlight is going to be quite, um, quite sharp. Mm. Whereas here, the forehead might not be as shiny as the eye, so we might knock this specular reflection back a little bit, have it come over the eyebrow, maybe just a tad, right? And there's going to be like a highlight on the cheek here because you got to think about these planes and where they are sitting in 3d space so if this angle is hitting a lot like a highlight of that sphere then logically thinking then this is a similar angle so that's going to hit sort of a, a highlight as well which then you can start to see it makes it look a little bit more realistic a little bit more 3d we can even knock that up a little bit and you might have one in in the corner of his eye here as well Mm. And you start to get that 3D feel versus what we had before, which was a little bit more flat. But yeah, don't want to go too into the weeds, but that was just a, it might help someone out there that's struggling with the, that I was, I was struggling with it. Yeah. With the, the painting and getting the light feeling correct. That's great. <laughs> question from chat this is looking incredible i almost feel bad for asking what brush are you using here <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one was coming again yeah. uh it's the same one actually that i was using for sketching yesterday right um it's just this long skinny but you could use any of uh kyle's mega pack i mean you could use like a graphite stick any of these right the, i could be doing this with a round a soft round brush yeah same same thing but yeah this is just a, a really simple it was my sketching brush and i just turned instead of it having like a taper to it right i just turned the taper off so now it's just flat right flat strokes yeah it's cool it um reminds it looks like clay to me the way that yeah that's that's the kind of vibe i'm sculpted I'm, right yeah that's the kind of vibe i'm looking for because then you can turn that clay uh into something else you can start to like add texture and that kind of stuff if you want to go that far or you can make it look like a vinyl vinyl character pixar sort of um almost like toy story-esque kind of thing if that's it was sort of vibe you got you can sort of take it in whatever direction that you want very cool um yeah melissa on youtube says looks sick yep Thanks, thank you melissa. melissa i agree um i think we had this question from the other day so i don't know if the person asked us is still here but it was a good question um where are we um you know what you kind of answered it anyway uh i think with angela sung but the question yesterday that we didn't get to was i know characters are, uh, are more your thing but are, are there any landscape artists you love um and i believe go. angela has some like landscape it's well from what i saw i'm actually not familiar um but i've just had a quick look seems to have yeah. some landscape yeah. things there yeah yep angela sung fantastic um rob Ruppel as well highly recommend he worked on um the into the spider verse oh right i think yeah. he's one of the, the i think art directors or one of the artists that were working on that oh, he's wow. got a very geometric uh way of doing things is awesome like absolutely love his work i love that so, movie. Yeah. it's incredible it's a good one isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. really like, the art style. like just the guts to be to do that for like a main like triple a 
kind of movie and franchise. Oh, yeah. To pull that off. Because awesome. I think the sort of thing has been tried, attempted before, but nowhere near as well as I think they did it. Yeah. Yeah. Just even like the different frame rates and stuff. Yep. Exactly. Of, like, like I watched a breakdown the other day of how in yeah certain sections of the movie they made it into different frame rates depending on what style yeah it was in if it was more comic book they would like do it on twos or something like it was more choppy yeah versus like yeah it was, it was i think i've seen the same now, thing like, yeah yeah it's it's it was crazy yeah and you're like oh that's why that's how they got it to look to look like that um but then yep. if you if you know any like a bit about video you're like okay how did they get that to make sense <laughs> without looking yeah. bad or like have dithering or i don't know weird aliasing or mm-hmm. weird blurred frames or something i don't understand how they would have done that but i'd imagine um, there was a lot of research and development yeah going in yeah. like a lot of custom like proprietary custom stuff that's going on because i think I, I saw there that they actually built something where they actually added these lines, like these sort of cartoon lines to the 3D models themselves, which is very cool. So it's like they did it, uh, what's the word? Yeah, programmatically they added like all these like cartoony mm. kind of lines to the, but it was all um, procedurally done, right. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where all that sort of stuff generally is pioneered, isn't it? Like in that in that mm-hmm. sort of sense i remember seeing it a doco on the um finding nemo when they originally created that and um when they had started yep. doing their test proof of test kind of scenes and things they did 30 seconds of what the ocean would look like and they showed it the oh, i know exactly what you're talking, you know talking about, about and one. they're like it's yeah. too real it's not yeah. it's like too real you have to wind it back a bit like because mm-hmm. they just got it per- they got it perfect with this engine that they created <laughs> they yep. had to wind it back it was like too ahead of its time it's like when no one's gonna believe yeah. that there's talking cartoon fish if the ocean looks like the ocean <laughs> you have to in the real it. ocean yeah yeah that's a great one if you haven't yeah. if people haven't seen it you've obviously seen it but yeah it's a good one yeah highly recommend see now i'm just really it is a good way of thinking of it. i'm just kind of sculpting the shapes here as well so i'm kind of thinking about the consistency of the light source how that sort of wraps around these forms. Maybe his eyelid isn't that dark, so we sort of brighten this up just a tad. Go back and get more, more sort of choppy with it, with some of these shapes. And maybe there's a little bit of a ledge on his eyelid, so that might be catching the light a little bit more. Yeah, because it that dimensional yeah, look, doesn't it? That it. extra, extra kind of sharp yeah. shape on the. I noticed when you did it to the lip and when you did it to the eyelid before, it just like kind of made the eyes pop. Yeah. And even here, like thinking about this eye, like I want to push this a little bit more. Let's say we'll increase the saturation here and make these eyes kind of almost glow a little bit Mm. because the light source, like I'm thinking about the eye is kind of like a bowl or like the iris is like a bowl. So if you have a light um, hitting one edge of the bowl one edge of that bowl is going to be in shadow and it's going to sort of transition into the light source hitting that other end edge or the mm. sort of inner edge of that bowl so that's what i'm sort of looking at here and then you can give that illusion pretty quickly of that eye being more three-dimensional and you get to play with a bit of color as it sort of transitions into the light there as well if you like that style it's again it's a stylistic thing mm. that we can sort of play around with um, we got a no, great I like question. With, um... oh, go oh, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to interrupt you with no, a no. question. If you're ready for it. No, go for it. It's a good one. Um, I usually get my timing of questions pretty good without interrupting people, but uh, sorry about that. No, no, you're uh, fine. You're fine. <laughs> sorry, I like to talk. <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you hope... Uh, this is a question from Aaron, by the way. Thanks for the question, Aaron. Uh, what do you hope audiences take away from your digital characters and how do you measure success of your designs? Ooh, good that's question. a good question. Um... To be perfectly honest, I don't know. I don't know what I'm uh, I'm hoping to achieve from any one particular. Uh, at the base level, this looks cool. That's like num- that that'd be nice. Mm. Um, there's no sort of like deeper kind of meaning I'm necessarily getting with this. 
or I'm trying to achieve. It's just, I like to, um, or it depends on the subject matter, right? If I'm doing something that means something, but I don't do too much of that. I've, I've been thinking more and more about that, adding more story into my illustrations and character, des character designs, which would be another um, exploration for me. Uh, so yeah, to, to be annoying, I don't know. If I had fun with it, that's like a win for me. If yeah. I had fun making it and if I learned something and if I sort of push myself a little bit more, that's definitely like, yep, that's a good indicator that this was a quote unquote success. But um, from a success from the content side of things, it's like if, if the viewer got value from what I'm putting out, like the explanations and that kind of thing, if they got value from that, and I oftentimes don't look at the likes, I look at the saves. So the saves are a good right. indication versus how many likes. Because you might just get a, a, a ton of likes and it's just because of the subject matter that you did. Like I might do Spider-Man or something and they're just like, oh, cool, Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. Like, yeah. away you go. Like, yeah. Yeah. But if I'm trying to sort of convey something that I've learned, the saves are oftentimes a good indication of value mm. that I've been able to... Um, Put across in some way if that makes sense yeah so that's one sort of indicator of success and then you've got the financial side of things like because if i have a call to action to uh like my store or the tutorial then you can look at the sales spike on a particular post as well how right. did that perform so there's all these different like measures of what success looks like um but really the, the first and foremost i've got to enjoy doing it or else i'm not going to last very long yeah. doing this stuff like if i hated doing this i couldn't talk about specular highlights and this <laughs> and that it's just like you get you, you get you to do my head in you know yeah yeah i but, get it i, get yeah, it. No, I, really I think it's a great question. approach i think it's a really great approach like i really i think it's very refreshing i think um there's a particularly with content creation i think there's a lot of people that kind of um i mean there's entire channels like um particularly in gaming i don't know how much you follow that but it's like um yeah yeah, yeah. you know very much focused on chasing clout and chasing the the headlines and that's it's like a newsroom right it's essentially a yeah. baby newsroom and it's like yep. yeah oh wow that's um that's crazy like yeah it's like a newsroom it's like becoming a journalist like it's um yep it's pretty intense um, you can also take something from that as well because yeah. if you want your stuff to get out there there's things you can do to sort of stack the deck in your favor as well yeah like um for example i might couple a pop culture topic but also feed in some of my learnings using the pop culture which yeah. then gets hopefully that reach and also the value at the same time so there's I'll, I'll oftentimes from content creation look outside the industry that i'm in mm. and seeing what other people are doing and seeing if i can learn something um from yeah what others are doing like i really like some of those uh, more storyteller story-based youtubers and things like that right now i can sort of like particularly with uh, video and um, uh, more, yeah, video, whether it be reels or YouTube videos or that kind of thing, thinking about the story. How can I actually keep people engaged and keep myself engaged as well in the, in the creation process? And how mm. can I, instead of just, as I said, I'm, I don't see myself as like a how-to, it's more like follow me on my journey. Yeah. Sort of sharing the stories that I've, I've learned, the struggles, the this or that. So yeah, it's a, I recommend just, yeah, getting into content creation because it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. No expectations to begin with because the goal there is to be keep it sustainable um, first and foremost. Because even if you're like super popular, if you don't like what you're doing, I don't know how, how long that's going to last. Yeah. You get burnt out real quick, I reckon. I that's so. just me. Some people might hate what they're doing and they just like the money that they're getting or whatever and they're just like, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that. It's a job. Clock in, clock out. It is It is what it is. But yeah. No, really good question. It was a great question. Um, it brought up a couple of questions as well for me to ask as um, I noticed, yeah, yeah. obviously, the talked about Spider-Man. Um, there was the Ellie um, portraits like The Last of Us and things like that. So that mm -hmm. I assume that was coming out around when everybody on the planet was watching you know, The Last mm -hmm. of Us, right? So I assume that's part of it. It's kind of yep. like, well, everyone's still, I'm watching this. I really enjoy it. 
everyone else is watching this, yeah. let's create some art on that. Like how excited, especially because the characters are so like interesting. They have really interesting faces, right? Like I think yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. It's um, like an interesting topic, but um, yeah. Is that something that you look at as well? Like, um, you know, this thing's put in Game of Thrones or something, I assume, if you were doing it around that time. I know you weren't. Um, yeah. I know some artists have like, yeah, like built like a lot. I, know if, I don't know if you know Boss Logic, um, but like his... Rings a bell. I'd probably know, know their art. Yeah, you probably know their art. And names are, na- yeah, names are a struggle with me. If I see their art, it's like, ah, oh, I know who you are. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, generally there's like something on Twitter and then like within an hour or two, he's like, yeah, here's my like artwork. Like he's a super, super, Oh, super there you great. go. Um, yeah. But it's an interesting it's way, right, to like write, play the game, write the algorithm kind of thing. Um, and, yeah. and and through and like, it reminded me of what you said about Spider-Man like you could be scrolling and just go oh yep that looks like Spider-Man like like I love mm-hmm. Spider-Man like you're always going to get a like for Spider-Man um, yeah I don't really have a question there yeah oh no it was like do I use that yeah I definitely do yeah like but I also have got to uh, got to be interested in the thing as well mm. like if I didn't watch the show I probably wouldn't like to be perfectly honest Wednesday I haven't seen Wednesday mm. I was just like cool character yeah. let's give it a shot and i let people know when i did the stream i was like yeah i, don't, I haven't seen this it looks like a cool character let's go and and see how we can explore explore the shapes and and all that sort of stuff so yeah it's like a nice balance because oftentimes i get inspiration from watching shows like i'll have like an urge to draw a character like i rewatched um breaking bad right and i did those uh those characters that wasn't any particular time that breaking bad was popular or anything like that i just decided to rewatch it mm. i was like ah i'm i'm feeling inspired let's uh let's give them a go yeah and yeah. yeah then but then get like my strategic brain kicks in and it's like okay how can i make this valuable at the same time so it's not just fan art it's like okay right. how can it help me from a business perspective or a reach perspective and that kind of thing so yeah so i kind of, of swap in and out of that two, something you really, really enjoy is, doing yeah. and then how, how does it yeah. how does it work for what i'm trying to what i'm trying to do on a daily basis and, yeah from a business and content yeah, exactly right yep. yep definitely that's cool well, all right you're just gonna have to consume a lot of tv um there's no way around that's it, it. <laughs> subscribe there to everything <laughs> Content secrets. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean that your um, su- like online subscription to um, content platforms is tax deductible? Now you think of it. Now we're thinking. I right, would say so. Guys, I think there's an I argument think, there. I think yeah. So. <laughs> there is a very Netflix. Throw it on. There. There. Just uh, tax throwing deduction. it out there. Just throwing it out there. Um, <laughs> hey, we've yeah. got a. This is not financial advice. Um, throwing it out. Uh, no, definitely not. Question uh, from Aaron again. This is a great one. Thanks for the questions, Aaron. These are excellent. Um, are there trends you see emerging in digital character designs, and and how or do you stay current with these trends? I'm not so much looking at trends in the character design space. I kind of am following my interest a lot with it. Like if you're talking about the style of things or whatever. Again, I've got to be interested in doing the thing. I mean, if, for example, no shade to furries or anything like that, but that's just not my gig. Uh, if that became super popular, I don't know. Future Ben might give it a whirl, but it's like, <laughs> like it's not something that I would probably go into. But if it's something that I'm interested in and there's that like nice Venn diagram of what I'm interested in and what's sort of a trend at the moment, that's probably a finding yeah. somewhere in the middle and putting my own spin on it Ben diagram um, could be yeah. good yeah that could be something cool to play with but yeah no real I don't know trends more stylized stuff happens to be um, at least in my sphere that I'm looking at in the art space that kind of thing but I'm trying to not just copy and be like okay now I'm going to do stylized stuff just for the sake of it Right. I want to okay how can I make this my own how can I, as I was saying yesterday, meld it with more traditional ways of of doing art? Like look at the old masters, figure it out, do sculpting, see how I can animate it. Like I looked at, uh, I'm actually playing around with it. Uh, what is it, Adobe Character Animator. So oh, yeah. my cool. call to action that I made on the end of all my reels is a character version of me that I painted saying, 
hey guys, if you like what you've seen, go check out my Gumroad. But it's like the character version, so it's yeah. um, always just playing around with that sort of stuff. And so yeah, not, I'm not really following trends in that in that way. But if I see something cool and I want to figure out how to do it myself, I'll hop on that. Mm. That's cool. No Love uh, hearing the it. character animator getting a little bit of a shout out. We don't do a lot of that, but um, it's super fun and yeah. um, can be quite powerful. There's been quite a lot of people sort of taking. Um, like yeah, three D three D images or their artwork into character animator. It's it's pretty simple actually to make a character, and then you can just talk over the top of it. Oh, and it kind of animates. It's pretty cool. It's amazing. I'm surprised how how people aren't utilizing it more. And mm. it needs to be like a part of like a normal workflow because it's. I haven't found anything that does something like that. So it's yeah. it was very 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 cool. So yeah, go check that out. You can like so I could actually make this guy a character i could like throw him in if i had different versions of his mouth so i might cut this out have him closed mouth open mouth and that kind of thing and you've got all the i can't i can't remember what they're called but when you talk in animation there's certain lip shapes yeah that you put on like characters so you, i could just make him talk yeah. um, there's like there's like my 16 Frank. of them or something like that right that animated yeah that's use. it yeah yeah yep. and some of them are used for the same like depends how simplified you want to be with it and that kind of thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, my character Frank, I'm gonna be start. I'm gonna start fleshing him out a little bit more in Character Animator as well. So when he does my promos for me, that's the little creature, uh, right? It's like your mascot. It's like the blue guy. Yeah. 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 He's like a. He's got like a little backstory that we made on stream. He's like uh, he comes from a a a lineage of like henchmen, but like all these bad. Okay. Or like the baddies in but he doesn't like that he's more kind and he right. just wants to like he's really into he's more peaceful and he's like i don't want to do this oh my gosh <laughs> this it's is like not a the, the dungeons and dragons <laughs> background um for the character it's <laughs> awesome yeah his ogre tribe yeah. or something he's got like, like a german accent as well oh, it's like it's great oh, this yeah is good. and it's yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> so i throw so then it's a little bit of that I, I do that voice on, my, um, on, on the YouTube video as well, so that's that's good fun. And yeah, just just playing really, and just having just having fun with it, not taking it too seriously. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna get back to the artwork a little bit as we're kind of getting to the yeah, definitely getting towards the end. We're about seven or eight minutes left um, with our time today. Oh um, man, it's flying! It flies, hey. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> um, I think it was smart to focus on just the head because you know obviously you're not going to be able to get oh, yeah. done but the head's looking yeah, amazing gonna everything yeah um is <laughs> this know, a bit of it, sort of rim light that's happening around the yes. edge i just kind of want to ask make sure i got a chance to ask a little bit about that yeah definitely so we got a bit of rim light going on it can help i'm a real big fan of rim light just because it's kind of a shortcut way to make the character pop mm. i like doing this kind of thing called subsurface scattering so if you think about um for example, if I get the light here, I don't know if you can see my hand, have a that kind of thing going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like a little bit of light that coming kind of through. Deal. So if you do it, like, I wonder if I can get it like behind my ear. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of effect that I'm kind of get or trying to achieve. Wow. Here, and that happens when the light source is coming through like a thinner layer of skin and all the blood vessels are sort of scattering the light. So it gives it a kind of cool effect. I really enjoy doing that. I probably overuse it. Some may say that I overuse it, but <laughs> it is a, it's a cool little effect that can really, um, really make the character kind of pop. That's awesome. To use another buzzword. But yeah, just doing rim lights. And you can change the colors of these as well. Like you can do like a blue rim light. I might. Yeah, that we've only got seven minutes left or whatever, so I might just start cleaning up some of these these edges and some of these shapes. So I'm just using that autofill uh, function, but I'm putting a mask on the layer itself so that I can kind of just cut into all these shapes and really clean up some of these some of these shapes, particularly this outer edge. Always looks a little bit nicer if you kind of clean it up. And he's got a little bit of hair and whatever, so I might make that a little bit more scruffy, I guess. Yeah. Wow, it's like crazy with the, word, the ear. Um, yeah, I've never really seen that before in illustration. But yeah, it adds so much. Adds so much. Yeah, and you, if you start looking for it, it is it is everywhere. Right. I'm going to see go, it everywhere? Just, yeah, okay. 
painting, but even how like oil painters do it. It's really like, and as I was saying, the, the, the layer modes are a means to an end. I'm, all, I'm working on one layer now. So I'm, I've combined them all down and this is just one whole layer. So now I'm just painting. So I sort of use those layer modes to begin with and then using sort of my knowledge of light and shadow and all that kind of stuff to to just sort of sculpt, continue to sculpt out the character and that kind of thing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, as we get towards the end as well, if people are looking for more from you, can we do a little bit of a plug for your um, where to find out more YouTube channel, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, for sure. So I think we've got all the links in the description there. So YouTube channel, I'm very active every Monday, I stream. Um, uh, I've also got uh, Instagram, TikTok, all the, you can find me. I've got a uh, eight hour tutorial. It comes with like a uh, like a forty page PDF and uh, like three D models and that kind of stuff that can help you get started with some of this stuff if you're interested in it. So you can check out my Gumroad. The link should be in the bottom. Uh, also got a podcast if you're interested in the content side of things. Uh, Make now, think later. We go deep into what we're working on each week. Francis and myself, the uh, the gentleman that helped me with this uh, this plugin. And then speaking yeah. of the plugin, we got the filthy plugin as well. So yeah, got a got a bunch of stuff going on, but all the links are, I believe, are in the description. Yeah, and uh, yeah, go go check them out. And yeah, That's I'll just cool. always be thing sharing my stuff. And yeah, if it's if it's uh, if it interests you, I'd love to have you on, pop in chat and stream. You can sort of ask any questions. Very good. good. And, yeah, and what's the company. format of the of um, the YouTube streams? Is it just jumping on and and sketching and drawing what you like? Is uh, yeah, more yeah. or less at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've actually started. I've I've started. Uh, this is just kind of just like an idea I've had, but more so keeping like if I'm doing, I might do like an anatomy stream where I'm focusing on anatomy, and if I'm focusing on the chest area, for example to be like a healthy artist because i'm really into the gym and that sort of stuff every break that we do we gotta like stop and like do 10 push-ups right uh, as, yeah. a, as a collective <laughs> get up get it because i called it uh what was it on stream the anti uh anti numb bum um workout because my I, I, I sit for so long my bum gets numb so it's like all right let's everyone up let's get it yeah do something move because yeah i forget so yeah, just we just have fun. It's yeah. nothing super like structured. Ask questions as we go. We come up with characters. We do a bit of sculpting. We look at different artists, break down how they work. I'll do warm ups as well, so we can sort of try different ways of doing it. I do environment stuff in my warm ups as of late. So yeah, just having fun with it really. Nice. Um, yeah. That's awesome. And thank you guys again for for having me. This has been fun. Just chatting and uh yeah having you all keep us company <clears throat> that's been great sketch away i've been really enjoying it i know um i know the audience has been as well and johanna and i am um, chatting in in slack we're like blown away by a lot of the color theory sort of things that you that you shared johanna's an illustrator herself um there was lots of so awesome. she understands it more deeply than i do um she's very excited about very some cool. of the some of the things giving us some homeworks and things to look at and uh Nice. New, new things that we haven't heard on on Adobe Live before, uh, and we've been doing this for oh, like awesome. four years or something now. So uh, very very cool. Um, but more importantly, we've oh, had a lot awesome. of fun. We've had a great time. That's it. That's what it's all about. <laughs> um, and I think that takes us to the end of the stream, ladies and gentlemen. So we can wrap up before we are kicked off. But Hans, um, this Alrighty. is looking this is looking super awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. Pens down. You can do uh, ten no, push ups okay. and uh, twenty sit ups now. There you go. <laughs> I've got to sit up. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go to the gym after this. So yeah, good, good timing. <laughs> That's it. Well, there we go. Um, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for all the fantastic questions. Uh, particularly Aaron, I think had some great questions in there. Johanna as well. Um, we hope you enjoyed the stream. If you missed the previous one, check it out. Uh, it's on uh, YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all of the Adobe Live APAC streams, uh, replays. They're all there for the last four years, five years that I mentioned. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be back with Ben sometime because uh, we had a really good time.
But thank you, Ben. Thank you so much awesome. for joining us and uh, sharing your process. Thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. All right. See you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.